Uh, hello, John. Hello, Brian. Now, I'm going to talk about uh, the, our doll here and um, also the um, recent um, elections in Northern Ireland as well. So, uh, talk about the doll first. Now, um, in this new doll that we've had for the last couple of years when uh, uh, Fianna Fáil, uh, the main party, lost 16 seats and Fianna Gael lost seats. Uh, but the Greens, that, the Green Party that had no seats, suddenly they were in position of 12 seats. So they were able to cob cobble up uh, a, a government with all these parties that normally wouldn't have that much in common. And uh, so uh, they formed a government. Uh, in the last in the election in this country, Sinn Féin received as much vote, votes as as uh, Fianna Fáil, uh, 37 votes, and they would have received more if they had more candidates. They didn't expect to get such a great boost. Uh, but Fianna Fáil had uh, the Speaker, I think, uh, which gave them 38 just by the skin of their teeth. And so uh, they cobbled the elections together. So one of the things is, uh, it reminds me of musical chairs, is that um, Michal Martin, who lost so many seats and is considered one of the worst leaders that Fianna Fáil ever had because of the fact that he, he has lost seats, he's lost more seats since he became leader than nearly any other previous Taoiseach or Prime Minister as they're known in other jurisdictions. Uh, so uh, poor, uh, so musical chairs, and now shortly uh, Mr. Varicker uh, will become Taoiseach stroke Prime Minister. And I presume other ones that have been ministers will have to vacate those, so musical chairs will occur, and different ones will get a chance for to uh, be ministers, and then those enha enhance their pensions, uh, because uh, they, they, they have benefits and, and, sh and, and cars that can be chauffeured about, and perhaps use the, the, the government jet. We don't hear too much about it at the moment, but I presume they still have one, and I think I remember they were supposed to have two, but probably they, they didn't use, need the two. Uh, so, and they have helicopters that they use and state cars, so they're pretty well and good salaries, so they're uh, more than some of the other uh, leaders in, in throughout the world. And so um, they're, they're, they're well paid for whatever it is that they do. And uh, we hope that they will um, manage to keep the country on an even keel and rule wisely. Uh, now, we've a lot of immigrants that have come into the country um, from countries where they were perhaps uh, persecuted or where the uh, life in the economic sphere was pretty limited. So they have more chances here. And of course, with the war in Ukraine, uh, we have a lot of now uh, people from that country that had to flee the war inflicted on them by Russia. Uh, so. Um, here we are uh, in, in this country now with a good uh, number of, of uh, these people and have been housed, uh, which, funny enough, when we had a lot of Irish immigrants, uh, there didn't seem to be as much put for their welfare as there is for people from other jurisdictions. And, of course, uh, <coughs> it's good to look after the <coughs> people that have been persecuted. So, let's face it, that... Um, um, uh, I think their priorities would need to be more focused on the welfare of Irish people at the end of the day, which they are because people are in possession of social welfare, which helps, their, helps them to survive. And of course then they provide rent allowances for people that otherwise mightn't be able to afford where they live. A rented accommodation is shocking expensive in this country which is not as expensive in the like of Rome and, and all these other countries because we don't have the, the sort of uh, policies that they have in those countries. Uh, people that buy property uh, have to give the potential tenant a 35-year lease at rent 
that is fake, if that is is based on 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 the what is the situation as regards prices in those countries. They can't charge what they like, which they can do here. We are we follow Britain, whereas the continent has much more has much better laws to protect the consumer, especially when they're buying houses and people can afford to buy houses and rent houses, uh, which they do abroad because the, the rents are not allowed to, uh, um, speculators are not allowed to benefit. There's nothing stopping them buying places, but they will be told very sharply what, what uh, they have to uh, allow, uh, to have to give possible rent, people renting a 35 year lease. With, with rents that are quite reasonable, so they don't make profit. So hence they haven't got this from the state, whereas we have here um, chaos and certain homelessness and people now have been housed in hotels and such like. So we have a very peculiar system in this country, which is not good. Uh, so this is the doll in, in, in this country. So we hope that common sense will prevail here and uh, we know that when there is an election, it's likely that Sinn Féin will be the majority party in due course and will be able to form a government. And we, we hope that and we pray that Sinn Féin will adopt good, sensible policies and uh, for the good of the people and won't adopt an agendas that, are, uh, that, that might discriminate against people, that they will, that they will in fact put some life back into the towns and villages now that look deserted because of the monopoly situation obtaining in the grocery trade and other trades. And uh, one of the recommendations that John Malone and the Christian TV Ireland pro, uh, project would, would, would suggest is that they should limit the share of these supermarkets, uh, these monopolies, uh, to 10% of the market as they were limited in other countries in my time when it was on the export market. They were limited in one of these wealthy countries like Germany, 7% when I was on that market years back. Uh, so uh, we don't have that here, and though it's enshrined in the Constitution under Article 45, no monopolies is, is allowed to, to, to uh, occur uh, so that the, the family businesses can grow and thrive. Alas, they can't, and most of them have closed because they're not able to compete with these, with these, with these supermarkets. So uh, it would be prudent. And by the way, this article that protects the monopoly resides in the doll because it was never perceived uh, that these um, TDs or these members of parliament, when they're looking for votes from the people in these towns and villages, would do such a thing. Uh, but they, unfortunately, they did and allow this. And when I was in business and these, some of these supermarkets come into play, they, they only occupied 15% of, mar of the market. Most of the other stores, by the way, were very pro-Irish in their, in their buying habits, so that we had an awful lot of Irish products that are no longer here. Uh, fruit and vegetables was produced and sold in these um, wholesalers and family outlets that was grown in this country, alas, no more. Uh, so that would be something I would suggest to Sinn Féin if they do, when there is an election and they do form the majority of former government, to look at that, to develop the, re, re, develop the deserted towns and villages, because a lot of them are deserted. Come, when you go down streets, there's not a shop open, only at these multiples, these foreigners, these, these people that are coming from abroad. So uh, these are situations as regards uh, the doll, and uh, let's hope that uh, these things will occur uh, for the benefit of the people in the country, as I've just outlined. And as regards in the north, uh, the six counties, or Northern Ireland as they refer to it, but it's really six counties, and it should be rightly only four, because Fermanagh and, and Derry uh, would be more suitable in here. Uh, they don't support the... Um, uh, they, 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 they don't support what goes on there in the north. And now, of course, uh, uh, there's been an assembly election up there, and Sinn Féin is the majority party with 37 seats. And the DUP, the, what they call the Democratic Unionist Party, and the word democratic is used about that, and that's about the last thing that they are. 
Uh, so they uh, shut the, they they withdrew from the assembly because of the protocol, which to, which is to do with the international agreement, whereby the north of Ireland, the six counties, got the best of both worlds, uh, the British market, and uh, be uh, to be uh, be able to. Uh, be supplied the common market and all the rest of it, and uh, but uh, DUP is not satisfied that it's 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 transparent enough for something for their liking, and yet the business people are very happy with it. So uh, there might be no assembly established in that neck of the woods for the next six months, but there has to be another election. And the chances are Sinn Féin will gain more seats and the DUP will lose more seats because the people that voted for the DUP have left it in droves because they've got educated. And uh, and so they're, they're voting for the Alliance, whose seats improved. And uh, SDLP has gone not as good as they were before because they've adopted the same uh, the, the same sort of uh, secular policies uh, which is pro-abortion and pro-everything that's not good euthanasian assisted suicide not good for for society you want to sort of protect the vulnerable and uh, support that type of thing so i i hope and pray that that sort of quality will 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 occur you're in there in, in those countries for the good of the people in that country yeah? because it's great to have peace there which of course was was started by the, that, that great Taoiseach Albert Reynolds and with John Major the, the leader of the Conservatives in Britain and they were they, they knew one another because they were Minister for Finance and they were great respect. So they helped to broker the, the agreement that then was copper fastened by Bertie Ahern and and Tony Blair and that, so peace in that neck of the woods is, is a great blessing considering the, the harm that was done in that, in that jurisdiction and the harm that was done down here as well with people killed. I knew some of them that was killed in Talbot Street. One of them was a great buyer and a great friend, a fellow called Burn, I can't think of his first name now, and his son, they were killed in Talbot Street and he was the buyer for United Drug a very nice man and we did business with him in my time so uh, these are the, some of the tragedies that we were under now we have peace thank god and it's a great thing to have it and along may it last so thank you very much thank you john